I think we're going to begin. Good evening and welcome to Tech Talks hosted by Vision Loss Alliance of New Jersey. My name is Linda Grosseff, Program Director for VLINJ and also with us this evening, Elsa Zavoda, Vice President of Programs. Hello everyone. Thank you for joining us this evening. And just a reminder, this program is being recorded. So we do ask that you please mute yourself and in about 10 seconds, we will begin. Tonight, we have with us once again, Dean Martinow. Before I introduce Mr. Martinow, I would like to share his bio. Dean has been teaching adaptive technology to people who are blind since the days of Apple IIe and the Braille and Speak. Dean has created, recorded tutorials, a computer magazine, and has written the Windows Keyboard Power User Guide and Get Cracking with Chrome for Windows, just to name a few of his books. Since 1999, he has been part of a team offering systems training to Social Security employees. In 2004, Dean created the publication Top Tech Tidbits for Thursday and produced over 800 issues before leaving the publication in the capable hands of others in 2021. Currently, Dean provides training in JSA, Windows and iOS to individuals directly and through vocational rehabilitation agents. He is an obsessive collector of electronic books and is fast growing a collection of MP3 talks from YouTube, which explains his familiarity with the content he will present this evening. Tonight's topic is downloading and converting YouTube videos with a quick update on Codex and converting Kindle books, which Dean spoke about in his last presentation. Before we move on to this evening's presentation, our tech talk format for this evening when Dean is ready for questions, he will let you know. We ask that you use the raise your hand feature. For those of you who dialed in, the raise your hand feature is star nine. That will raise your hand. Star six will mute and unmute you, giving you the opportunity to ask your questions. If you're on a computer, Alt-Y to raise your hand and the mute and unmute command is Alt-A. At the end of his presentation, we will open up the floor to questions. If you're using the Zoom app on the iPad on the top right, select the more options on the top of the screen and flick down to raise hand. On the iPhone, this feature is located at the bottom of the screen on the right hand side. Dean, we welcome you to Tech Box. So I'd like to introduce to you Dean Martin now. Thank you very much. It's good to be back. Uh, I guess I'll do a minor correction. My last name, it's the, you know, we've seen, it's, a, it's the French E-A-U, so it's Martineau, uh, as opposed to Ao, but that's a small thing, but might as well say my name right just for saying it right. Um, so no big deal there, and um, I'm happy to be here, and I appreciate the opportunity and the welcome, and um, so what I want to do is catch up on a little bit of the latest Stop the news. workout. Uh, uh, the latest news uh, for the last time I was here. I don't even remember what month that was, um, but it was some months ago. And we talked about how to convert Kindle books to, to any format you want, pretty much, using uh, using the codex program. Uh, and it's probably gonna be good if people can mute themselves so that people aren't being distracted by other sounds. Um, and so I wanna give an update about that because the world is not as perfect as it was in that regard. The guy that created codex, his name is James Scholas. He has removed all traces of that program from, his, from the web. So you can't get it anymore. And he doesn't answer any questions about it. It still works for an awful lot of Kindle books, but increasingly there might be books that you that you want to buy 
and you try to convert them and Codex won't even see them. Um, there are some extensions of, of Kindle books, the, mo the more modern ones, uh, Codex won't, won't handle. Uh, there's, actually I forgot what is H, HFX, I, think, I can't remember what it is, K, KFX I think it is. And if, so when you, when you download a book and then you go look in your Amazon uh, downloads at what the file extension is, if you've got books with KFX extensions, Codex won't touch them. If you have books with AZW3 extensions, I think what you have to do with them is rename them to AZW and then Codex will sort of touch them. So uh, what to do about this? There's not an awful lot you can do. There's two solutions. Uh, one is less accessible and that is you can use the caliber that's C-A-L-I-B-R-E program uh, that's, that's still being developed. It's not very easy to use with screen readers and I haven't, it can be done, but it's not easy. I don't do it. Uh, I know people do and can, and it can be researched and found out about. Uh, another choice, and I also haven't done this, is a program that you can buy. Um, I've heard from two different blind people that they have bought it and they really like it. I think it's around $37. Uh, be prepared here because I'm going to give you the, a funny name of a program and a, and a website uh, that you can get this thing from. You can also Google the thing once you hear the name. Uh, I think sometimes we don't Google enough. So the program is called iSummersoft underscore Kindle. In other words, iSummersoft and then an underlined sign and then the word Kindle. And the, um, the address is I Summersoft, that's I S U M M E R S O F T dot com, or, yeah, dot com slash Kindle uh, slash Kindle dash converter. And their website wasn't 100% clear. This thing comes out of Eastern Europe, but I wrote to them, I said, Does this thing work in Windows? And if so, how do you do it? Because I really can't tell. And they wrote right back and gave me a pretty thorough answer. And as I say, I've had, I've had a couple of people say they bought it and it's really helpful. So Codex still works. It'll probably work less and less. I don't know how long it'll work less and less. I suspect one of the advantages of iSummersoft Kindle probably is you can probably use a modern, the up-to-date version of the uh, Kindle for PC program with it, at which point uh, you have the advantages of accessibility, if you want to read your Kindle books on the computer, uh, you can do that, which if you're using Codex, as you know, we talked about, you can't, you have to use an older version of Kindle for PC. Uh, we can talk about the specifics of this in questions and answers. Um, I suspect if you cared about this, you probably heard about it last time. It's still wonderful. I can still convert just about all the books I want and put them on my Braille devices and carry them anywhere and not be limited by, by Kindle formats. All right, so I think that's the update I can give you about Codex and we can talk more about it if people have questions. So let's get on to the topic for our meeting this evening, which is downloading and converting YouTube videos to MP3s. A lot of us really can't see very well, if at all, um, so the, the, the fact that something is a video doesn't do us any good. And even if it does, do we really wanna be stuck to our computer? Of course, you can use YouTube on the iPhone and all kinds of places, but I happen to like having things in audio format. Uh, Excuse me, this is Les. You got a lot of background talking and we can't hear you. I'm not hearing that, Les. I don't yeah, know we're not, if it's... We're, but we, we are. Okay, well, one thing you need to do is mute after we finish this conversation. Um, I'm not hearing it. I'm only hearing it from you. Yeah, there isn't any other background. Yeah, I'm hearing chatter. just Dean. It's fine. Plus, you got to mute. I am muted. No, no you're not oh, muted. No. Otherwise, we wouldn't have been able to hear you. All right. He's now muted. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I hope 
there's an individual problem there because I'm not hearing a thing ordinarily. And it sounds no, perfectly good. It sounds very quiet. Yeah, yeah. So we're we're in good shape. And I think perhaps now that we've muted, I couldn't tell if it was less or Wes, it might be might be better. But so um, I like carrying my YouTube videos around on devices that aren't necessarily internet uh, uh, capable and playing them you know, whenever and wherever I want away from the computer. I'm gonna talk about two ways to do this. Um, again, one of them isn't free and I didn't like the fact that I had to pay for it, but it's kind of a dream. I'm so happy I did. Uh, it just makes life really easy. Actually, there's, there's more than two ways. To, there's a lot of ways to do it. Um, there are web-based approaches for, for converting videos. Uh, if you do a search for like a Google for convert Kindle to MP3, you'll find all kinds of, all kinds of results. And a lot of them are going to work. Um, those are good for, you'll, you'll be going on a website, you will input the, the link of the video that you wanna convert, um, maybe fill out some options or not. Um, the site will very clear, generally the ones I've been on will very clearly guide you about the process after a certain point the video will be converted and you can download it and you've got it. Um, those are good, again, for, for small use situations. Um, but they're, and they're also gonna be free. They may want some money, but you don't have to give them any. And there's a lot of choices for that. Um, in a similar vein is the, the um, program that a lot of us, some of us used to use uh, called, an, Pontes, P-O-N-T-E-S, Media Downloader. Um, that program is designed for the blind, so it's very easy to use. A lot of us, I think, have been discovering that it simply doesn't work very well anymore. It's, YouTube isn't, it's not in their interest to let people download and convert videos automatically and easily. So uh, in my experience, Pontes just doesn't work very well, and that's why I finally had to look for a paid solution. Um, let me say a couple words though. These ideas, this idea of downloading YouTube videos is based on getting the URL, the address of the video. You have to have, you have to be able to come up with and locate the address of the video. And I think a lot of us have had difficulties sometimes doing that. The key is to use the PC cursor, not the virtual cursor. So at the moment when you want to get the address of a video, you need to tab and shift tab. You using the, the arrows, if your screen reader allows that, may or may not get you to where you want to be. So tab and shift tab. And then once you do that, use the context menu. Um, generally the, the application key, what JAWS refers to as the application key. It's actually a context menu key. Everybody else knows it as that. Um, use that key. The exact way that the context menu is going to look is going to vary from browser to browser. I pretty much use Google Chrome for everything. Other people use different browsers, and there's no too much, not too much pro and con there. It's just kind of what you like. So in Google Chrome, I'm going to tab to the link for the video or the playlist. We'll talk about that in a minute when we get to the paid option. Um, hit the context menu key, arrow down to copy link, or, to, or just hit the letter E for copy link. Uh, other browsers, that shortcut key is going to be different and you'll have to learn it. I don't know it in Edge or in the other browsers. So please mute people, somebody's not muted. Um, I'm going to wait until you're muted. All right, that sounds a whole lot better. Um, so, all right, once you've got the URL, let's talk for just a minute about uh, Ponte's Media Downloader. It's still an option, and maybe it'll work for you. Again, it's good for not real heavy use situations. Uh, but if you're gonna start downloading playlists of music and play and lists of talks and you know, all the videos that have been uploaded to a particular site, uh, it's not gonna work very well. 
Uh, it never has for me. It'll, it's the results have always been inferior as far as that's concerned. So once you, and by the way, you get uh, Ponte's media downloader if you don't have it, and it's free um, from a place in Romania, Pontes, P-O-N-T-E-S dot R-O slash E-N, so that you're reading the site in English and not Romanian. So Pontes dot R-O slash E-N slash scripts, and you'll find uh, Ponte's media downloader there, and you just download it. Um, it's very straightforward. When you open it, then the sort of one of the nice things it does is it checks the clipboard. And if you've put a, if you've put an address of a YouTube video on there, it'll just put it right in there and you can just tab to the uh, convert button and start the conversion process. The last time I tried it was a few weeks ago in order to get ready for this presentation. I did a comparison between it and the paid choice that I'm gonna get to. Um, for just a single video, uh, both of them worked. Ponte's was very slow. But it was, you know, you can't, this is not a race. You just want to get the video. And it worked and I, and I got it. Uh, it puts the videos into a folder, a Ponte's folder under your documents folder by default. But you can change though. You can change the location where it puts your downloaded videos. One of the big advantage that Ponte's has, and this may work for this purpose, is you can download the original video in original video format. This comes in handy when you wanna make a presentation and use a video somewhere where either you don't have a good internet connection or you really don't wanna have the ads pop up. Uh, you can't predict when ads are gonna pop up, or at least I can't predict it, but they do. And sometimes even in the middle of a video, they pop up multiple times. And it's you know not the greatest when you wanna make a presentation. Uh, from what I've been able to gather, when you download a video using Ponte, you know, video or original video format, the quality is pretty good. It isn't, it isn't uh, particularly degraded. So you, you end up with a video which you might be able to use to make presentations. That's something that the option that, that I'm going to pay for doesn't offer. Uh, and, and of course you can use those web-based tools often and you can accomplish the same thing. But Pontes is very accessible to the extent it just doesn't work very well anymore. So uh, you can easily follow the progress of the of the download with it. Um, it's as I say very accessible. You have both an interface you can tab through, and you have menu interface that's very typical that we know pretty well how to use nowadays. Uh, you have some options. Uh, it's a great program, and when it used to work better, it was really nice. But even at its best. It never did playlists as well as the one that's not free that I'm gonna talk about in a minute. Uh, that's just simply amazing what it'll do. And I think when you, well, all right, I'll, I'll get to that in a minute. So I think that's all I wanna say about Ponte's Media Downloader. We can, if there's questions about it, I can answer them, but uh, it's a good program. I appreciate their effort, but uh, it just doesn't keep up very well. Um, so, and we do have one question if you want to take a question. Uh, okay, go ahead. Uh, Suzanne. You have to unmute yourself now probably after we've yeah, done she's, she's, uh Working on it, okay. You're not unmuted yet, Suzanne. Am I muted? Oh, no, you're you good. Go. We got you. You got me? Yep. Okay. Um, I know that I can get up to the address on Google Chrome by hitting by hitting um, Alt B. That's the address for the YouTube, right? Correct. That'll work. I always use Control L, but it really doesn't matter. Either one of those. That's that's a that's a good thing you brought up. I should have commented on that. I think I so yeah. How do you get the address of a YouTube video? Um, my preferred way. <clears throat> if I know I want a video and the, and the, and the destruction, the, the destruction I gave, that was a Freudian comment. The instructions I gave a minute ago kind of assume this. Uh, I know I want to get, grab this video. I don't have to go into the, to the, to the video to get the address. I find the video on whatever page it came from, whatever page that's linked from. I 
get close to the to the link for it. I tab or shift tab until I get to that link. Oh. I use the context menu and I use copy link. Now you can, of course, do it the way you're describing. Nothing wrong with it. You open the video. Now maybe the video will start playing. I find that a little bit distracting. Um, <clears throat> maybe if that happens, by the way, there are some nice YouTube shortcut keys that we have to, so, I, and again, I'm mostly a JAWS user, so I don't, I, NVDA allows for this as well. You have to turn, um, is it browse mode? I think it, browse mode off, I think it's the way it works, uh, or uh, the virtual cursor has to be turned off in JAWS, and then you can use quick, quick, uh, quick key navigation for these YouTube keystrokes. So the one I know, and there's others, K is pause. So if a video stops, you don't wanna hear it um, with JAWS, turn off the virtual cursor and hit K and that'll silence the video. And then you can do what you wanna do, need to do uh, with that. And once, when you have the video open, when the video is on the screen and you wanna get the URL, you simply hit Alt D or Control L and that's got the address bar highlighted and you hit control C to copy it. Right. And then you'll put it on the, that puts it on the clipboard. That'll put it automatically into the Ponte's media downloader uh, system. You have to paste when we get it to the, to the non-free program that I'm gonna talk about. So- Thank you. So this, uh, as is often the case in Windows, there's multiple ways of doing the same things. And the fact that I prefer one way doesn't make it any better than any other way. So, uh, uh, Dean, can you take another question? Sure, we can do it that way. Um, Les? Go ahead, Les. Uh, yes, um, yes. Um, are you going to send um, these notes and these directions out, sir? Um, I may sort, I hadn't written them out to do that. I can sort of, I should probably do that. I can write some kind of a little summary, but um, the... Um, Thank you. Again, they have a recording and, and, and you can also take your own notes, maybe if you have that facility, but I'll, I can write some things down. Um, Just so you this know. Recording, this recording, this is being recorded and it will be on a YouTube channel. So Angela, you can always go to YouTube and listen to the recording. I don't know how to do that. I, I don't know how to do that. So this is why I would like this stuff written down. Okay, some of, some of, um, you don't know how to, okay, um, the recording, the, do, you, do you know how to get to the Facebook page for uh, VLANJ or how, you know, how did you get, how did you find out about this meeting? Because there'll be a link to the YouTube video. Um, I don't know if they send it out by email or if it's on the Facebook page or how the, how the, you get the link, but um there'll be a link to the YouTube video that you'll be able to just simply hit enter on uh, with your screen reader. I'm not saying we won't provide notes, but you also are going to have the ability to get to the YouTube video and it isn't as difficult as it may seem like it is now. So, Thank you, Dean. Uh, so <clears throat> a lot of times we just have to try things and, and, and eventually you succeed, although also we need to be accompanied sometimes because some of this stuff seems really imposing and really difficult. So I'm sure the people at, what do you guys call yourself? V-L-A-N-J, is that how you do it? Or do you call yourself Vlange? That's what the screen reader says. <laughs> we call ourselves V-L-A, Vision Loss Online. V-L-A, okay. I suspect that the staff at V-L-A can help you. Maybe I shouldn't be speaking for the staff at V-L-A, but can help people who don't know how to get into YouTube at all, uh, get that far, you know, figure out how to, you know, on your system, uh, get to a video like this. And actually it's kind of foundational for what we're talking about tonight. Uh, you have to be able to get to YouTube. Uh, so perhaps that's another good program for a, a future date. Maybe we yeah. could do a tutorial on YouTube. Good that might idea. be. Yeah, that might be. I have. I would actually have to learn some things. This is an awful lot. An awful lot. I don't know. I just know what I do. But there's an awful lot more that I don't do. You know, with it. So, 
Um, and uh, Suzanne also has another question right now. Okay, go ahead, Suzanne. No, I just wanted to answer her. Is she using a computer or is she using an iPhone iPad? That's a valid question because it's actually, oh, well, I'm a this computer. Is less. This is Les, I'm sorry to interrupt, but Angela is patched in through me. Right. And she does use a computer. Okay, that's okay. good. Thank you, Les. You're welcome. I, I guess being, being an old timer, much as I like my iPhone, I find that it's easier to do th a lot of things on the computer than it is to do it on the iPhone. There's certain, certain things just aren't as easy to do, uh, as far as I'm concerned, on the iPhone. Powerful and wonderful as it is, um, maybe somebody who's either living on the iPhone or younger than I am, uh, who's, that's how their life has been. I mean, I know how to do all this stuff on the iPhone. I just don't find it as convenient as, as the computer. So I'm glad that you have a computer there. And I'm, I know, I am confident that, that you can get to the point where you can get onto YouTube and find videos and then do what I'm talking about tonight, which is turning them into MP3 files. So, okay, now that's as far, any other questions for now or should we, should we move on? Um, Aaron, you have a question. Um, I, I'm actually good with the iPhone because I, I, I can't learn JAWS kind of late. Right. Okay, that's so, fair. So by, by the time I finished school, uh, my school pretty much was playing catch up. Right. I, I used JAWS for, I used JAWS version 12 for a long time. Yeah. Well, and and ever since ever since I, I got an iPhone, I, I find I find using a I find using a computer very slow. Yeah. Um, well, okay. That's that's I, I I think a lot of people, a lot of young people who haven't ever gotten very much computer instruction, and they have an iPhone, and so they're. I know that this is a, a phenomenon, and I regard it as a problem because no, using a computer isn't slow at all. But if you haven't learned how to do it, it seems slow. What we're talking about doing here, which is converting YouTube videos to audio files, you may be able to do it on the iPhone if you pay for uh, a, the, you know, the, one, of the, one of the YouTube options to let you download videos. Uh, otherwise, you probably can't do it at all. Whereas on the computer, you can with this tools that I'm going to talk about. Um, so, but then again, maybe you have the iPhone, you don't care. You can just click on the video and watch it on the iPhone. So, but the idea here is, I guess it kind of assumes a computer and it assumes that you don't really want to sit and watch all your videos on the computer for any number of reasons. You want to be able to turn them into audio files for use somewhere else. Maybe you want to greatly enhance your music collection and you can do that with, <coughs> with this approach. Maybe you want to, well, I've talked about maybe you want to just have much more mobility with talks and other audio content that YouTube has, which it's amazing all the things that YouTube has. I'm still uh, discovering it. I want to digress just for a minute uh, before I go on. Uh, well, I guess first, are there any other questions visible at the moment? No, you can go on. Thank you, Dean. Okay. I want to digress for just a minute. This isn't really part of the topic, but it's something people should know about, I believe. It's called you describe, you describe com. spelled just the way it sounds, all one word, Y-O-U-D-E-S-C-R-I-B-E.com. This is a service provided by Smith Kettlewell, where volunteers describe YouTube videos and provide audio description for them. Well, needless to say, it's a drop in the bucket of all of YouTube videos there are, and the other thing that was pretty funny when I tested it is they have some they have some children's like there was some Mickey Mouse Club and other little things. Quite honestly, that audio description is a really good example of how not to do audio description. But it's on the other hand, there's I hadn't known about this until my wife told me there's a bunch of and a growing number of videos of people providing cooking instructions on YouTube. They are entirely silent. You know, she can watch them and she tells me what they're doing, but I do not get a thing out of it. Well, a few of those, very few compared to how many there are, 
are described under this you describe service. And actually those descriptions are good and they would work and I could probably follow the recipe if I was a cook. So just to, just to know about it, if it's something you're interested in, check out youdescribe.com. Uh, there's not a heck of a lot there. They need volunteers obviously to do the job of, of, of um, audio describing the videos, but it's kind of cool. The very fact that it exists and that you might get a few things out of it is really pretty neat. So I wanted to make sure people know about that. All right. Um, <clears throat> on the matter of converting, now we've talked about the alternatives that are limited. Now I want to talk about the alternative that is pretty much unlimited. That's a program. It's a misnomer, the program is. It's called Free YouTube to MP3 Converter. Well, it's not free. I think apparently it was free way back, but it's not free anymore. Um, as soon as you download it, you pretty much have to pay for it. And I think it was $38 or something like that. They actually had a sale over the holidays. So if you wait around, they might have another, you know, or check out their, their address. It's the company that makes this thing is DVD Video Soft. And it's dvdvideosoft.com is the web address. Um, and then they've got a bunch of converters. They have a whole raft of converters. Um, most of which I kind of wonder why anybody needs. But anyway, um, unfortunately, they actually have three or four YouTube converters. So that the, the one I bought, and I'm not willing to buy any other ones, is the converter for U free YouTube to MP3 converter. They have other ones. They have another converter that lets you download YouTube videos uh, in video format. And I think they have others that'll convert it to perhaps other formats. Free YouTube to MP3 converter does allow you to convert to other audio formats besides MP3. It allows you to convert to Aug Vorbis, uh, AAC or whatever, AC, I don't know what they call these things. I don't use the other formats much. MP4, uh, lossless code, uh, wa lossless wave, which is good for audio quality. Uh, and I think there's one or two other audio formats. And there's also a variety of MP3 formats there. Um, different different uh, sound qualities. My understanding has always been that by converting something to a high, higher sound quality, if the sound quality of your originating sound file isn't that good, you're not going to enhance it by converting it to a higher quality sound file. But it may be, I, I may not know what I'm talking about, and some of these YouTube videos actually are very good, sound, have very good sound quality nowadays. So you may gain something from that. So anyway, the program does allow you to convert uh, to video formats in, in a variety of different, or audio formats a to a variety of different sound qualities. But let's go back. Once you've gone in and paid for free YouTube to MP3 converter, the first thing that happens is you get an email saying you can buy all the rest of the converters for $19. So if you think you might want to do that, I mean, I guess it's kind of a good deal because each one individually is probably as many of them are as much as this. I think they say it's a 200 and some dollar saving. Well, that depends if I was going to pay for it anyway. If I wasn't going to pay for it, it's not a saving. The $19. Anyway, that's how that's that's we are all familiar with that phraseology. Anyway, you get a chance to get the other converters. And if you like the idea, uh, it may be valid, valid. I didn't do it. So um, I bought, because you had to, and paid for a free YouTube to MP3 converter. And I'm really glad I did, because it really has given me, I've got a, enough hard drive space now that I don't really worry about. If I download a bunch of videos, I can delete them or let them stay there, or, you know, the MP3s, and they're not really hurting anything, um, which is a really nice bit of freedom to have. So, um, a couple of the, uh, so the first, so this actually is very simple to do. Um, again, you have, but to this case, you have to paste the link to the video. So we talked about how are you going to get the links to the videos, those two ways, either you open up the video and copy the address bar, or you copy the URL from the context menu without even bothering to open up the video. Uh, I've got to get the link, the URL onto the clipboard. When you first enter the program, 
there's very there's actually only two choices when you first enter the program. There's the whole list of MP3 presets, and you can arrow through that very easily. Uh, there's a couple that I didn't mention that somebody might want to use. Uh, there's like an audio book. There's a, there's a couple of lower quality ones. So if you don't have a whole lot of space or the device you're using isn't going to represent very high fidelity, you may want to use that. Um, those, those choices for like audio book formats that they give you for, you know, lower quality MP3 files. The other thing is a checkbox that you have. That checkbox lets you... Um, combine all, all your downloads into one file. You could want to do this, I suppose. I never do, but maybe you will. If you're downloading a playlist. The matter of playlists, this is just interesting because either artists, some artists will put an official, an official, they have their official YouTube page with some or a lot of their music and others, people put music up there, uh, put, you know, create their own playlist of artists' music. I don't understand the whole thing of copyright because, and I think it's enforced very variably because uh, obviously some of that can be a copyright violation and some groups, some bands and some movies and everything are very strict and nothing is there that they didn't authorize. In other cases, especially with older music, there's a lot there that, that nobody is authorized and it stays there. Um, a funny story, maybe some of you are old enough and know about this. Anybody remember the the Adventures of Chicken Man, the wonderful white-winged weekend warrior? This was syndicated out of Chicago in the 60s, and some of it was very clever. And I noticed the other day that, and I didn't, this didn't used to be there, because uh, they put out some albums of Chicken Man recordings, and I wasn't ever willing to pay for them. Well, they're now there on YouTube. You can get all those things. And I think listen to the entire series. Um, and there's really very there's so much on YouTube uh, that, that you can get to. You just have to explore and find out if things that you're interested in are there. Um, at the top of the window in YouTube, there is a search window. Um, sometimes it comes up as a search button and you have to activate it and then, then an edit field to search and just put in a search. One note about that, when you do that, the page doesn't change. So like you, you type in a search, you hit enter to activate it. Nothing appears to happen. It doesn't like the page changes and you get a, a results page. The results simply appear below. And so you just can start using your heading navigation because each result is a heading. And you just keep hitting, hitting the head, heading navigation, your H key. There's probably a you know, there is a number of key you can hit for more specific, but there's no advantage of it here. H is as good as anything. Um, and it might actually take a while for the page to expand uh, to showing everything that it's gonna show. Uh, but anyway, it's, there's an awful lot there. So, so you, let's talk, let's take the case of individual videos. Somebody gives a talk, somebody has a, there might be a movie or a movie trailer, or whatever whatever it is on YouTube that you happen to want to convert to a sound file for listening to somewhere else. You you find it. Um, you've got the you've got the URL on the clipboard in one of the two methods that I talked about, and so now you've opened up uh, free YouTube to MP3 converter. What do you do? Well, you can paste this anywhere in the interface. It doesn't matter where you hit control V to paste it. Um, the program is very forgiving about that. And once you do, the interface expands. It expands to a whole bunch of buttons that I never use. I don't care about them. You can, you can um, there's a secure download button that I have no idea what it does. Whenever I pushed it, it doesn't do anything. Um, there's, you can share the file, you can play it on YouTube. I'm not sure why you'd want to do it there. If you don't otherwise just play it on YouTube, it doesn't make any sense. Um, you can remove a file if you accidentally paste one. I don't, there's not really a need to do this generally. Um, and eventually, so what I do, I, I do this very simplistically. I tab around the interface. I just keep tabbing. Sometimes I have to tab two or three times through the interface. Eventually, I see a download button. It wasn't there before. What has to happen is that 
free YouTube to MP3 converter. It has to like check the URL that you put on the clipboard and see if it's an actual URL of an actual video that it can actually do something with. Once it figures out that it can, then it shows you the download button. You hit space, not enter, but space on the download button. Um, you will then shift tab and it will give you your download progress. Uh, it'll, the program will download the video first and then it will convert it to whatever the format you chose uh, from the little list that you have at the beginning of the interface when you, when you enter the interface. And when it's all done, it gives you a nice little chime. It puts the video by default, and actually I don't know if there's any way to change it, into your music folder. So uh, you just check your music folder, uh, which you can always get to from uh, the This PC interface from, uh, or probably from, and if you, you can also, uh, uh, what's the word I wanna do? Uh, you can also uh, tip, pin it to the, uh, inter the file explorer interface for quick access and then you have access to that. That also, if people have questions about using file explorer in Windows 10, I haven't checked Windows 11 version yet. Uh, that might be another topic because File Explorer is a really nice, powerful program. So anyway, you, uh, you've you got your, your newly downloaded YouTube video in the music folder uh, and it's a nice MP3 file ready for you to work with it. Now let's talk about the whole matter of playlists. And I, and I admit to not knowing everything or even maybe even most things, but so let's say you've uh, got an artist and you go through, you do a search, and you find uh, a, a somebody that you find a, a video, and then they'll, they'll, sometimes it'll list three or four songs. It might say, view entire playlist. Um, now you can probably, if that's, a, if that's a link and not a button, you can probably copy that link and use that link. Some of, sometimes I will go in to some of the playlists, and I'll find a, a link, It'll, it can either be a link, it might be a, uh, a uh, what do you call those things? A, a split, a button to, for, for uploads. And I will choose that and that'll sometimes expand out into links and you can find links that say, show you know, all uploads or all videos or all live programs. It varies what you're gonna see depending on what, you're, what source you're, you're on. I often prefer to choose the all uploads link because as I say, I've got plenty of hard drive space. I'm not in a rush. I don't care how long it takes the program to download everything. It can take 12, 15 hours if it wants to. Uh, I do not care because once, it do once it's done, I'll have what I have. And uh, so again, use, use your tab and shift tab to find that link. You may fail a time or two but eventually copy the URL to the clipboard and paste that into uh, free MP3 to YouTube, free YouTube to MP3 converter, find the download button once it activates and hits, once it's visible and hit space on it. And you may have a very slow process depending on how much, how big a playlist you've had. But compared to the results I ever had doing this with uh, Pontes, I've really succeeded in, in getting a lot. I mean, I've had, I've had uh, collections of 200 talks uh, that I've gotten and, and you know, a couple hundred songs from some artist that I wanna get. Um, and so uh, it's just rather nice to be able to get all this stuff. And you just, to some extent, there's a certain amount of experimentation with it. Um, you have to not worry about failing. You're not gonna hurt the computer. You're not gonna hurt the website. Um, and just, you know, just, look around, use the skills that you have with your screen reader to, uh, to navigate around using the quick access keys that you know or need to learn to get to the different parts of the interface. So um, the nice thing about, let me talk about a couple of, uh, from, for adaptive technology purposes that I've thought of. Uh, so maybe some of you are familiar with the organization called iBug Today, they're out of Texas mostly Houston, I think. They have several different activities per month. They have Mac training, they have Android training, they have uh, 
iPhone group trainings and they have our iOS group trainings and they have something called uh, IO, Apple, I was at Apple Workshop and they have, um, and they have different, different activities that they do and that Apple Workshop's monthly and Apple Cafe I think is monthly or iOS Cafe. Uh, it's iBugToday.com and they have a YouTube site. And so all these different things, you can simply download as much or as many of the, those playlists as you want. Um, so if you need to pick up on the Mac, you need to pick up on Android, there you go. You've got all kinds of nice training videos for yourself. And these aren't podcasts. When things, were, when things are podcasts, it might be easier to get them as podcasts, especially on the phone. That's an area where the phone excels over the computer in my estimation. Uh, but uh, as far as YouTube videos, for converting them to MP3s, the, the phone is, is really, as, uh, the, the computer is really pretty good. Um, I didn't bother to make a note of this. Dan Clark, who used to do training, and I don't think he does anymore at, at Freedom Scientific, has done a um, nine or 10 part, maybe even more coming, series on Windows 11. Uh, very thorough, very well done uh, to the extent that I've listened to them. And that whole collection, they're all on YouTube. They're all on their own website, but they're all on YouTube. And so if you're interested in Windows 10, you can download that whole collection, that whole playlist, and you've got it as MP3s. Listen to them anywhere. I'm sure there are other sites uh, of of YouTube videos on MP3 uh, on um, on YouTube. Other adaptive technology uh, work that people have done uh, that you could get, probably including the VLA YouTube site. You can eventually, once you get a handle on it, download whatever's there, and you've got it as audio files. So I hope I haven't confused you all too much with this. But it's uh, this program is a dream. I, as I say, I sometimes, unfortunately, I found it to be true that sometimes we simply get what we pay for. Uh, free works really well sometimes, and not so well others. And um, these guys, because when you look at their website, I think that they stay ahead of YouTube. YouTube's not in the interest of letting people download these things and convert them. And I think a certain amount of effort is put out into uh, deflecting some of the free tools well these guys aren't free and so they seem to stay ahead of the curve and they have on their site they list each day uh that oh yeah you downloading works and here's what we hear you know we've done they've and they list various statistics of things that they've done to make you to make downloading from youtube still work and so um if it's something you want to do or something you think you might want to do uh, it's a really nice way to grow an audio file collection of whatever it is you like. So I think that's all I have to say. So um, why don't we turn it over if we still have any questions left or if I've either put the whole audience to sleep or bewildered them. Uh, thank you for staying around if you have and for listening. And um, let's see where all the gaps are in my uh, presentation. Well, we have a, a lineup of questions, Dean. So um, we're gonna start with Christina. Hi, Dean, it was wonderful. I went, I did go on and I just put iBug today as my bookmark. So I'll check mm -hmm. that out. Um, did you say for the free YouTube um, is $19, did you say? Uh, it was $19 when they were on discount. It's like $38. Okay. And do they send you like updates or anything like that or just? Um, you know, I've never seen an update for that thing. I, it just sort of seems to work. Um, so no, I haven't ever had to update it. Uh, if they, they may, maybe it updates itself and doesn't ask for permission. I've never, okay. never, I don't think I've ever had to do that. The other thing I just want to say when you were talking about Kindle, I have great success with using the e-reader from the National Library and using my iPhone and the Kindle app, and it just brings over my books into Braille. It's just so great. How is that for turning pages? My whenever whenever I've I don't I don't like the iPhone Kindle app because you'll be reading and oh, it's horrible. There's this gap between pages. Um, but how is it for turning pages in Braille? 
I just like keep using, there's probably a way to do it, but I just keep using the, the um, sliders, like the right and the left. To right, go back and right. Forward. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think there is a way. I think that's the best thing you can do. And yeah, I mean, you can't beat it. It's free. It's, 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 you know, I mean, it's for a lot of people, I'm just kind of picky and didn't want to do it that way, but yeah, it's great. Um, you, Cause the Kindle app is horrible. Yeah. Yeah, it's well, it's yeah, it's it. I haven't lo- I haven't even looked at it for a while because I don't use it. Uh, when yeah. I did, it's kind of okay, but I it's cl- kind of clunky really to do to use that app. Um, I, I just like it because I like having my books in Braille. So well, exactly, but th- and that's so do I, which is why I convert them and then I put them in my Braille devices. And if yeah. I want to read them in Braille, I do. I actually like I have hymns devices that I can use Braille and speech. I use speech a lot, except when I want to use Braille. At which point, mm-hmm. I'm really happy to have it. So, yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Thank you. No, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try getting the free YouTube and try it. Thank you. Yeah. No. It's it's enhanced my use of YouTube a lot. Maybe not the way YouTube would like, but because um, the wonderful thing is, once we download those, there's no more ads. Um, oh, those are the worst. The, now, when you are in the program, you can just paste anywhere. You said right. Doesn't matter. There's actually a a menu option for paste. There's no reason to use it. Just hit control V. The other thing I forgot about, I never have done it, but you can, um, there's in the, the file menu, which this, the program has. One of the nice things about um, Pontes is, you know, you, if, you, if, it, if it worked better, you could grab a URL, let, and, and then it just adds it to the Pontes collection of things to download. You don't have to do anything. In the case of free YouTube to MP3 converter, you have to paste each URL separately. Of, let's say you're doing individual videos or even playlists. You have to paste each one separately. However, there's a way, I haven't tried it, but it appears that you can create a text file, uh, a, a text list of, of URLs, and the program will process those. Oh. So that's something somebody might want to do sometime. I haven't had a reason to do it, but you might want to. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you, Christina. So um, please, for those of you who have your hands raised, there are a few of you. So be patient, I will get to you. The next up is Suzanne. Could you just repeat the name of the company website? Yeah, the, the maker of the free MP3 to free YouTube to MP3 converter is dvdvideosoft.com, all one word. Just run dvdvideosoft.com, all run together. Okay, Um, next, the last four digits, it's a phone number, last four digits, 7707. You can unmute and ask your question. Can you hear me? Yep. Yes. Yep. Good. Yeah. Hi, I'm Jason. Hi. Yeah, I like to you know, talking about these uh, downloading the videos and um, what you've been talking about. Can you also do it like on a Braille Note Touch Plus? I could. Uh, almost certainly not. Um, uh, because the program is a Windows program. Um, Windows. again, there are services. There's you can pay for a serve for YouTube. I don't know. I don't exactly know what it's called. I, I saw it one day on the iPhone that I, when there was a possibility to download and I looked at it and yes, I can do that if I pay a, one of the YouTube services. I'm not honestly familiar with the various YouTube pay services. So I don't know which one it is, but you, if you pay for that, yeah, then you can download things onto the Braille Note Touch Plus. Uh, otherwise, no, I, I, I'd be very surprised if you could do that. Or, or, if I, or if I download it on, like on the computer, can I paste it on the thumb drive and then I can just play it, put it in my Braille Note Touch Plus? Well, if you if you convert it to MP3, if you're, you're talking about making it MP3 or, or if you do that um, using the processes that I mentioned, any, any of the three processes I mentioned, yes, by all means, at that point, you can have it, you have an MP3 file, you can put it in anything you've got that plays MP3s. Um, including the Braille Note Touch Plus and a whole lot of things that are a whole lot smaller, uh, you can you can do that. Oh. But in terms of um, playing 
you know, using the Braille Note Touch Plus to download a YouTube video or, or, or to download it and or convert it to MP3, uh, I'm just about positive. The only way you're going to be able to do that is to, to pay YouTube, pay for the YouTube service for that. And maybe that's worth it for you. I'm not saying it's not, um, but I don't. But that doesn't mean other people might not want to. But I do have a Windows computer, too. What's the free one called? Because I, I came in late. What's the free thing yeah, called? The free one, it? give it a try. Well, there's, again, there's, there's, there's two free ways. One is just to do a Google for uh, YouTube to MP3 converter. You'll get a lot of web, so a lot of websites. And you, you may have to try a couple before you find one that's, that works and is accessible. But they do. Uh, I've done that. And it's, you know, it's very workable. If you're again, if your desires aren't too high volume, um, that's that works. And the other, then the next level up is a free program called Pontes P O N T E S Media Downloader. Um, and again, it's it's I don't recommend it for music playlists or collections of talks or anything. It just doesn't has never worked for me as well as the paid program oh, yeah. does. But but it theoretically it does, but it it doesn't. But it works. It's a, that's a maybe a little bit better than the web option for, for, for doing things, but it still falls far short of the paid program. How much is the paid one, you said? $19? Oh, what was the $19 thing you talked about? That was, what, that was when they're on Christmas sale. They had a holiday sale. Oh, yeah. And what's the name of them? The, the paid program is called if I ever get it right, I think I used to be able to talk when I was younger. I don't know. At least that's my, my impression. Uh, free uh -huh. YouTube to MP3 converter. Free and if you do a if you do a, a Google, I did this today. The first the first result wasn't the program. The first result was some website. So find the result that gives you the DVDvideosoft.com link, and then then you'll have the right thing. It says free YouTube to MP3 converter. It just works. And I only have to I only have to pay once, and then I can. Add oh yeah, many, it's many not, yeah, it's un, unlimited. Once you've got it, um, you've got it. Okay, great. <laughs> Thanks. Okay, thank you. We have a, um, another question from the last four digits of your phone number five one. Uh, I can't three five one seven. This is Mary Beth, and I, I just had two quick questions about the iSummersoft. Yeah. Um, when you convert, um, yeah, I know the Kindle junkie, right? You're um, right. If, <laughs> when you do, you usually convert to DocX um, when you convert, or what? Uh, I can see that it had a bunch of. I just quickly looked it up on the website. Sorry, while you were talking. Um, That's all right. That's um, what do you usually does. convert to? <laughs> do you usually convert to DocX? That was my first question. No, or, you wouldn't. Um, you would not convert to DocX. Uh, okay. Are you, are you saying are you saying EXE when you're saying DocX? No, no. The, the word the the DOCX. Oh, Do, oh, DocX. So oh, sure. Um, I probably wouldn't. I'd probably convert to to um, EPUB. Um, EPUB. Okay. Yeah, that's what I. Um, but then again, it depends on what your tools you have on your system. Uh, actually, yeah, I was going to put on a Braille note, probably. Well, I don't know if, yeah, I don't know which Braille note, uh, the old one or, or uh, touch? the Touch Plus. Touch does Plus. That, uh, does that handle EPUBs? I don't know very much. I don't know if that I device... don't know either. It's, uh, I'll find out though. And also, yeah. one other quick question: Have you ever used a, um, a a tablet, just a regular like Fire tablet with a Braille display to to read? Kindle? You know, that's there's a one another another audio. Adaptive Technology site. Um, well, it's a podcast actually. The Brailists. They're out of England, and they oh, did. Oh yes, I love them. They did a uh, one of their uh, one of their. Well, it's now a podcast. It was a webinar thing they did at one point. Is right. that's the cheapest they and they described all about how that's the cheapest way to get Braille is to use to use a Kindle Fire and probably an Orbit Reader or something or whatever. Um, but right. an Orbit Reader works, and you got that's darn cheap braille reading material there um is that and, the one they did in december that i missed i no, reluctantly it's a lot, missed it's, it's several months ago i was just looking at that older okay yeah, it's it's older so yeah you just go through their collection and you'll with whatever podcast reader you've got and yes you'll you should be able to find that and uh oh but beauteous yeah but uh, the e i mean 
EPUB, and again, one DOCX might be what you want for the Braille Note Touch Plus. Um, mm -hmm. I tend to like EPUB. Ultimately, I tend to like text. I'm kind of weird that me way. Me too. Give me, give me text. So Codex, if you can get it, and, and if somebody can help you oh, get it, no, and if I not, I can Codex. I have you. it. Oh, you have it. Well, you could always get love it. Actually, recommend it. get EPUB, and then you can turn it into whatever you want if if you don't want <gasps> EPUB. What a great idea. Oh, thank, yeah, works thank great. you yeah, so, works so just much. Fine. Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thanks, the book junkie here. Thank oh, you yeah, so well, much. I, mean, too, I right? really so, appreciate it. It's your insane. Help. I, think the, I think some of us, especially if we grew up blind back in the days when we could yes. hardly get anything, and you know, you had to wait Absolutely. for days before something you ordered from the library showed up. And now, you know, we have totally. this, this like, you know, remarkable uh, Bookshare, which has over a million <laughs> books. Uh, I should give you a little hint. Do you know about Z Library? Z Library. Yeah. No, Check out do not. Z Library. Uh, it's out of okay. it's a Russian thing. I mean, I'm sure the publishers are not excited about it, but uh, they've got nine oh, wow. million books. Bookshare only has one. Awesome. Million. And uh, they're all they're EPUBs. It's free if you create an account. Then you can download more things, and you can also contribute to them, which isn't a bad idea, perhaps. But it's they. Sure, uh, of but they. Um, they're, they're either EPUBs or PDFs, um, and mm -hmm. uh, yes, they have a lot of stuff. I mean, really a lot of stuff. So, and you're right. That's exactly right. That we fought so hard to get to get books. Oh, it's now it's like a feeding frenzy. I was just, you know, Thank oh, you I know. so much. Yeah, yeah. We're dating ourselves. <laughs> oh, I know. Uh, unfortunately, I think a lot of this audience is in that is in this category. Uh, not all, but a lot. Thank, thank you very much. No, oh, thank you. Thank you. Christina, do you have a question? Okay, Dean, I found it, but now I'm in the download process. It's not telling me to pay. Does it tell me to pay after the fact? You know, I don't remember. I think it was, I think when you try to run it, it's going to tell you to pay. Okay, because I just want to make sure I have the right thing. Well, I have D, you... D, um, DVD video soft right yeah and if it's and it's they have a, if you're on that site i know they've got just gobs of converters if you chose the yes. free youtube the mp3 one you're in the right place and it'll you, you'll think you have a free program and then you go in and they'll say okay oh, no. i'm looking does it download and i'm like yeah no it's not it doesn't yeah it lets you download it okay thank you mm -hmm. thank you I'll let all of this information just kind of settle in everybody's brain. And then let's think about questions. Anyone else have any questions? It might be interesting after the questions, uh, and I may or may not be able to meet the need. And I don't know if you guys do this but at VLA, but to find out what, what technology programs people might want since we have a pretty active group here that that want to learn things it might be interesting if, if you, know, you don't have to do this but i'd be interested to hear it and well, whether I, I whether i can meet the need or not we could find out or or somebody else can i don't mind doing that do we have um does anybody want to give suggestions as dean had asked Well, maybe not. That's fine. Except, well, we have 7707. Okay, let's let them. Okay, can you hear me? Yep. Yes. Now, what was, what, what was the question again? Well, any first off, any other questions about this presentation, if you have any? Second, I thought it would be interesting to find out from people what technology-related uh, what tech talk what topics would you like to have on tech talks which either i might be able to help or if i can't somebody else certainly can you know what do you wish you could learn on one of these well uh like i, I just bought a braille and bosser and i yeah and i i like to learn how to you know use the braille and bosser i bought <laughs> that might be a little too specific um which one did you buy out of curiosity um, I bought the one that has Braille on both sides. It was four thousand something dollars. And okay, uh, there's more than one of those. What What's the name of it? You know, I'll oh, called E something. Uh, forgot. Uh, okay. Yeah. Well, wherever you bought it from, they may provide some training or at least some telephone tech support. Um, 
I got it from I got it from Humanware. Okay, well they should their website. I, I don't know. I haven't looked at that. I'm I but but they you know they have a training business training section on their phone site and on their website. Um, oh, yeah. So that'd be the first yeah, place to look. Yeah. So good suggestion. And they are willing. They are willing. Um, when you call them, they'll give you some information over the phone. The other thing they have is they've sort of collected uh, names of people who are willing to train, and of course they're they're going to do that for various prices. But um, so that's another approach. If you're like really running into trouble with the thing, if you have exhausted the free options, um, find out get get some get some links for. Um, for trainers, it's going to be hard. Like we, we can't do a program on that for a number of reasons. The least of first of which is we don't even know what it is. But even if we did, not very many people have that. I mean, compared to the oh, population, yeah. not very many people have that embosser. Yeah. So. Well, another, another thing, I, another thing we can talk about. I think on is how, how Braille works. You know, on the, like iPhone or I, you know. Okay, now that's a totally that different subject, and that's a real mm -hmm. valid one. Uh, maybe if people want that. Um, again, there's a lot of stuff online about it, but uh, that, might, that might be pretty valid because uh, I'm actually frustrated with that right now. I got to do a little bit of learning. I used to do a lot better on, on the iPhone than I do now with writing Braille, and I think they've progressed beyond yeah. me or I've fallen backwards. I don't know, but there's, you know, that, if, that's, that might be something to talk about if, if there's enough interest. I don't know if there is, but that's yeah, more universal. Yeah. Well, just know that I'm jotting all of these down, so stay tuned. Okay. Don't know what we could do. Um, thank right. you. Christina. Um, Dean, Windows 11 and the changes with JAWS. Yeah, uh, I can't do that yet. Maybe I won't ever. I haven't. Ever, I haven't. <laughs> I'm really, I'm getting, technology doesn't excite me. It's more like it's stuff, if, unless I want to do it. This is something I want to do, and I haven't decided if I want to do Windows 11. I haven't know that I see a reason. However, again, that that um, that uh, set of YouTubes that I talked about are that from Dan Clark, um, and I should have written down the uh, probably if you Google uh, Dan Clark Windows 11 Jaws, you're going to find it, and there's like 10 or 11 nice, well presented videos there i haven't okay. converted yet so i'm still in 10 is it c-l-a-r-k or yep e i think it's c-l-a-r-k okay thank you okay we have another question or suggestion um alicia hi um this is alicia Hello. Uh, um refers to um creating videos on YouTube because I have my own YouTube channel, but I've been making my videos mostly from my phone, right. which is okay, but I would right. rather make them from my computer where I have more um, space, but I don't know really how to do that, like how to create like videos on my laptop because I'm learning how to use Fusion, right. so I don't know how work fusion with youtube to like um the videos on my computer that's a really good question as i've never done it i've only i i mean really never done it um uh, okay what can you do i would you, okay, again google and youtube are our friends um you know blind people recording videos um I mean, there's you know, do some searches because there are other people who are doing it. You're and uh, there's actually more blind YouTubers than I would have thought that there are. There's actually quite a few, mm -hmm. um, and you might find something that way. Um, and I mean, if you have, now that's something where I have never had a reason. I haven't ever felt a reason to use a Mac. If I was doing video production, I would definitely want a Mac. Um, I don't honestly know how Windows users do it, but I think they do. Okay. I know Mac users do it really pretty easily. Uh, um, maybe you can get uh, the Blind Life uh, guy, Sam, 
Is that oh, Sam Seavey? Yeah. Maybe he could do a, because he does YouTube videos. There's actually several. I mean, that's there's uh, yeah. There, there's uh, a couple of couple of women do. Is just different. I don't follow them much, but I know that there are you know some some other YouTubers out there, and uh, so I suspect that that information is available, but I don't um, know how to find it too easily. I just wanted to say, Alicia, it's Christina. Next month, Judy Dixon's going to be on, and she's written books on videos taking. She's blind herself and doing picture taking videos so you might want to ask her um next month maybe she has some suggestions yeah she's okay. a whole lot more likely to know that than i am she i mean she's like does handstands with her iphone camera and things and you know um i i have never had any interest in that and and i i appreciate that people do but i never did um mm -hmm. and and she, and she may very well know about about video production as well um even with the phone chances are you can do it better than you're doing it with the phone if you have some apps or some techniques that you may not have at this point. Mm -hmm. those, I mean, mm -hmm. especially, I don't know what phone you've got, but the, the newer phones have pretty darn good cameras. So uh, it's not mm -hmm. like there's a camera limitation. Yeah. I mean, I have a smartphone. I have an Android. Um, it does, it does really well. It's just, um, I would like to have like more, um, Cause like I'm when I'm videoing, I'm I have to hold my phone while yeah, I'm videoing. Right. So I would rather right. use the, like laptop and not be able to hold well, the phone and just concentrate on what I'm doing. There may be ways to get around that with a stand of some sort. I I don't know, but I mean, there's you know, okay. there are there. But yeah, I understand the the. But I suspect you're going to have people who do all their a lot of their video work on the phone, given the kind of cameras people have on phones nowadays. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have any other questions or comments? We well, I have one more question. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, say if, if I watch a YouTube on my Amazon Echo Show, is it is there a way I can just say to forward it to my email through the Echo Show? You know. Um. Well. Yeah, I don't. I'm not a user of that. I, you, yeah, you could, you might be able to share it. Um, share it, yeah. But again, that's not gonna, that's not gonna give it to you in, as an, as a, as a, as an audio file that you can take somewhere else. Um, oh, it is. Oh, I don't PDF. think so. Uh, I, I'll be surprised if it does. I mean, but it would, it would allow you to share the video, uh, perhaps. I don't know because I don't have one. But. Um, oh. You might be able to do that. The best thing to do with those things is simply to try it. I mean, that's that's yeah, that's kind of the nice thing about Echo devices. You can just say things, and then mm -hmm. either the work or it doesn't. Yeah. Yeah. Show. Okay. So, um, Dean, I really want to take this time, on behalf of all of us at VLA, to thank you so much for your time and your presentation this evening. This was a lot of information, and I'd recommend to you that you listen to the YouTube, all of you, a couple of times just to retain it all. Um, so in closing, I just would like to remind everyone to join the VLANJ Tech Talks Facebook page and tonight's program, and you'll get a lot of great information on that page. And I wanna say to learn more about programs or any questions that you may have, please call Vision Loss Alliance 973-627-0055. And you can reach me, Linda, at prompt number four. And I just wish everyone a good night and stay well. And we look forward to seeing you all next month. And thank you, Dean, once again. Thank, Thank you. you. What, a, what a totally pleasant group and good questions and good conversation. And yeah, I really was, was fun. It was really nice. Thank well, you. We're happy to have you. I thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Good night, everybody. Thanks, Dean. Good night. Thanks, Linda. Thank you. Good night, everybody. everybody. Thank you all. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Alexa, hang up.